prepare for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? I decided to do a little bit of racing today. I've been posting a lot of videos on mods on the simulator. I put the iPhone mount on here, and also got the mount for my iPad, so I'm running iHUD on both those. And I'm just getting ready to do my first race, real race, in a very long time. So right now I'm just doing some warm-up. So we'll go ahead and get out there. And I figure every time I'm doing a video, it's always me just like going around an oval track or something like that to test the mod. Now I want to actually do a video where I'm really racing people. But I'm not that good of a racer, and hopefully recording this isn't going to like compromise my ability to drive, which I guarantee it will now that I jinxed myself. But I'll try to take it easy, and we'll see how it goes. I'm loving having the gauges on the steering column. The iPhone was a, that was a really smart move. Uh, a lot of people told me I should have it in plain sight. Now I can see it through the steering wheel and it's right below the screen. So it just takes me a moment glance down to see where I'm at, what gear I'm in, RPMs. And then I can put all my other gauges and stuff like fuel and stuff like that over on the bigger screen. Okay, there we go. Got the checker flag. Wow, I got one lap in the warm up. Wonderful. Hopefully, that doesn't translate me into smashing into a bunch of people. All right. All right, warm up's over. Let's greet up, boys and girls. So, so far, no complaints with the mods I've done to the cockpit. Um, everything seems to be working good. Uh, one recommended tip, uh, if you haven't watched those videos yet, you should definitely go watch them. The ones where I modify my cockpit to have uh, two glass displays. Sorry I don't have them in this video, but um, I didn't have time to get the webcam figured out and synced up before uh, before starting the race. So we're just going to go with what we got here. All right, let's put it into gear. And we're going to belt this race out. Wish me luck. Green, green, green. All right, there we go. I'm going to stay on the outside here. Oh, apparently so is this guy. All right. We're going to play it safe on this first corner and just ride the brakes. I don't want to die in lap one. All right, stay to the inside, buddy. Stay to the inside. Whoa. Getting a little frisky. Man. All right. Somehow dodged getting in an accident there. All right, come on, buddy. Okay, I'm gonna break on this one. I can usually carry a lot more speed through that corner, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try to take minimal risks on this run because I don't want to pile everybody up while I'm trying to make a YouTube video. That'll piss off the community good. Alright, so far so good. I think I got my POV set perfectly. My dashboard, from my point of view, is perfectly straight across all three screens. Of course, you guys can't see that because I'm just doing screen capture right now with that Elgato Capture HD. Alright, don't back into me, buddy. Thank you. Alright. Coming up, we're going to hard break. On third, don't lock him up, don't lock him up, don't lock him up. There we go. I'm sure everybody on here has a lot more racing experience than I do, so I'm going to defer to them. I'm also really digging these LED lights. If you haven't seen that video, check that out. They uh, they keep fooling me thinking it's sunny outside because they produce the exact same tone of light when set on the white setting as the sun. Um, I don't know if they intentionally did that, but it, it definitely keeps fooling me. Like the other day it was uh, nine o'clock out and I, and I saw a light outside and I thought it was like five and it completely screwed up my clock. But it is really, really nice on the eyes and I like that compared to the lighting I used to have in here. All right, we're going to win by attrition. All the people wrecking and falling off the server are going to push me up the ranks, not me actually overtaking people. This is the most exciting iRacing experience ever. Not really. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so far my digital gauges are all working like they should. Very, very cool. I only look at the one on the straightaway, so I'm looking at the iPhone one constantly. It's actually helped me a couple times. Woo, going a little wide. There we go, downshift. All right, we're good. Coming to this corner a little wide and cut the apex. 
There we go. Tried that corner a little differently. Whoa, dude. Whoa. Contact. Damn it. I could have avoided that. I had target fixation there. Okay, we got a guy coming up on me fast. I'm going to go ahead and let him pass. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. Punch it, dude. Punch it. There you go. Just letting you pass. iRacing's one of those games. Oh, crap. Here we go again. Punch it, punch it, punch it, punch it, punch it. Okay. Whew. Just barely missed him. iRacing's one of those games where it's like, uh, it's not a game you just sit down and just relax and have fun at. At least I don't. I, I actually get pretty stressed about it. I mean, I feel a lot like I'm in a real car. Um, you start to forget that it's just a game, you know, when you have real people in here and they're all racing and you have licenses and points and people have to pay for subscriptions. Um, it changes a little bit. It's not a game so much as it's almost like a, a real sport. And uh, I'm not going to say that's a bad thing. I don't think it is. Okay, dude. Dude, seriously? Seriously? I hate you, whoever you are. I'm just kidding. I don't hate you. I should have. I should have went on the inside. They say you the court. You'll have to slow down and give up the time game. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Well, this race is gonna hurt hurt my license. <laughs> it's okay. It's a good introduction back, and I and I don't really mind. Um, but wow, that's that was pretty crazy. It's hard to concentrate and drive at the same time. But at any rate, this is it, it is a really stressful game. Like I find that when I do a 20 lap race. And I get up out of the chair, I mean, I'm actually, like, on the verge of sweating and I'm mentally exhausted, which is the same type of experience I got when I went to Dirtfish Rally School and uh, did their three-day course. You know, you'd get in a car and you wouldn't do much. You'd, you'd, seriously, I mean, you're sitting in a seat and turning a wheel and pushing some pedals, and you do that for a few minutes, and you get out and you're just razzled. You're like, wow, I just feel like I ran a marathon. Um... And uh, you definitely get that same kind of experience with iRacing. So if you haven't tried it before, go ahead and try it. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like, you know, any more realistic than Live for Speed or R Factor or games like that. I find that, you know, those, those are pretty realistic too. But it's definitely more professional in how the rules are applied and, and the driving style that you have to do and taking chances and taking risks. Um, you actually do get punished for that in this game. And... Uh, or in other games you don't. You just got, you know, some guy screaming his head off on the headphones. Uh, which still happens in iRacing every once in a while. Um, even though it shouldn't because they have rules against that. But, you know, I let it slide on occasion because, uh, you know, sometimes I make a mistake. And I actually do take out a bunch of people and I genuinely feel bad about it. But, you know, what are you going to do? Racing. <laughs> Rubbin's racing, I guess. Uh, I'm actually doing pretty good now that I don't have a bunch of people wrecking in front of me here. But you know what? It doesn't matter how fast you can get around a track. If you can't avoid obstacles and predict other people's driving behaviors and stuff like that, you're not going to be a good driver. I mean, you're not going to be fast in a race. And I found that out because I actually did, uh, it wasn't on Lime Rock. Which one was it? There was another, another track I did that I had nailed. Like, literally, my consistency was within, like, two-tenths of a second. Um, oh, here we go again two tenths of a second on each lap and I was like this is awesome and then I joined a race and everything just went to hell in a handbasket because I only had one racing line that I could do predictably if I had to deviate from that line for whatever reason people wrecking in front of me slow car things like that it uh completely ruined my game I was like uh I get off rhythm and I couldn't do it so it, it, it it's better to focus on just being a good driver and the techniques and stuff to deal with what's coming up instead of just being as consistent and fast as you can on lap. That's just my opinion. I am not a professional, guys, in any way. And you know that if you've watched the first part of this video. Man, commentary is kind of hard when you're trying to concentrate. <laughs> uh, this by far is not my best race, people. But, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever won a race. I'll have to go check my roster. I don't think I've ever come in first place yet in iRacing. But that is a goal of mine now that I've done all this work on the simulator and stuff. You know, I actually want to put in some seat time. And get good at it, because I think uh, I think that in itself would be its own reward. Plus, a lot of my sim enthusiast uh, subscribers, like the ones that are probably watching this video, um, I know you guys enjoy watching racing videos, and I and I like making them for you, absolutely. But it's definitely a different type of game. Wow, this guy's actually pretty slow. I think I might try to overtake him. Oh, he's not going to make it easy for me. All right, nice and easy, buddy. I'll just make him nervous until he wrecks. <laughs> oh, he picked up his pace a little bit. I think I made him a little nervous. 
Yeah, this game, it, it actually, it's one of the few games I play that actually gets my adrenaline pumping. Uh, you know, I play stuff like Battlefield and stuff like that, and it, it really doesn't get my adrenaline pump because it's like, okay, you die, you restart at another place, you grab your guns, and you go. In this game, it's like you make a mistake off track wreck, you lose points off your license, you're getting towed to the freaking pit, you went, just went from first place to last place, you might not even finish your race, you might get stuff knocked off your license so you can't even participate in certain races. And, you know, me, I just recently got out of the rookie category. I'm now a class, what is it, class C, I think? I don't know. I'm not too good with the terminology here. But I'm finally out of the rookie class. Um, but you make enough screw-ups, you go right back to the rookie class. And that means you're racing with a bunch of people that, that pretty much suck, just like you do. And uh, it's really hard to climb back out of that pit when you go back there because you have so many people slamming into you. And the game's not smart enough to realize who's at fault. If you, if you have contact with another car, you both get blamed. I mean, I don't know if that's changed, but I've had times before where a guy just came running into me, 1,000 miles an hour out of the straightaway, puts me into the wall, and I'm like, holy crap. And then at the end of the race, it's like, oh, look how many points you lost and how far you went back in your license because of that altercation. And I'm like, well, how could I have avoided it? You know, that's just racing for you. I really like these Club Sport V2 pedals. Having that load cell based brake is all the difference in the world. Back when I used to play with the Thrustmaster T500 RS uh, default pedals, um, I struggled with braking because I just lock up. I'd lock up the tires so much, and with the load cell, you can bottom the pedal out and not lock it up, and then just use a little bit of pressure from your feet to alter, you know, to kind of alternate back and forth between full lock and uh, and release. And it helps a lot in these corners. I mean, I, I noticed the first day I installed these pedals how much of a difference they made on my driving. Oh, I stayed a little too far in inside on that one. Oh, well. Tracking to the outside. Get up into sixth. My little gauge mod on my T500RS is holding up good. I'm still connected. I can still got all my data. It's very nice. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Oh, thank you. That guy did the right thing. See, he waited for me to pass before pulling out. <laughs> you can see the comments on the top screen, burn in hell. Oh, my God. These guys get really, really pissed. Um... I've been in some races. I actually disabled the voice chat. Ne next time I do a race and I post it online, I'll enable the voice chat. Because, oh, my God, even though there's rules about being vulgar and stuff like that, I got on one night and there was this guy. He's, like, threatening to kill me and tell me how much of a piece of shit I am. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude. And, you know, I poked him with a stick a little bit. I wish I had recorded the session. It would have been great YouTube material. But, uh, you know, I poked him back a little bit. And I got him so mad that you could, just, you could hear him spitting on the microphone on the other side. And I was like, wow. And then I went and looked at the rules, and it's like, yeah, this is completely bad conduct. This isn't allowed on the servers. Um, so now I disable the voice chat. But you can still read the text chat up at the top. You know, they still get into it pretty good in the text chat when they're so wrecked they can't drive anymore. Got 10 Ooh, 10 laps to go. Woohoo, halfway point. Do doing pretty good right now. It helps to have the peripheral vision from the three screens. Um, doesn't really help that much in like FPSs and stuff like that, but in racing simulators and flight simulators, it makes all the difference in the world. Because it allows you to look far into the corner when you start your turn. And uh, one thing you learn about cars when you drive them in real life out on a track is the car goes where you look. I mean, now granted, if you go too fast into a corner or something like that, you're, you know, it's not exactly going to work out that way. But your brain has a way of working things out. You know, if you look where you want to go and you keep your eyes into that corner. Oh, I got a guy coming up on me fast here. I got a blue flag. I'll let him overtake. Go ahead, buddy. You can take the outside track. It's all yours. There you go. There we go. We'll just go follow around the leader. Where's he going? Get on the track, dude. Whoa, dude. What are you doing? I have no idea what this guy's doing. He's freaking me out, though. He, like, was hauling ass passing me, and then he's, like, off in the grass and to the inside of the track. And now he's going all slow. And he disappeared. No, now he's back. 
I think we're just experiencing some weird server lag. I better get some distance between them. One thing you'll notice in iRacing is if you start having a lot of lag, um, <laughs> cars will just miraculously like teleport in front of you and you'll wreck into them and it sucks. And then the person on the other side, they don't see it that way. So they're like, oh my God, you suck. You wrecked into me. It's like, dude, you like materialized before my eyes. I had no choice. Yeah, I'm really loving this simulator setup. This feels really good. This is by far the, the best I've had this thing set up and configured to date. I just got to learn me some good driving skills. Hey, if you guys got uh, good tips and tricks on driving and stuff, hey, you know, patronize the shit out of me. I don't care. Leave me some comments. I, I love to learn new things. Don't assume that I know everything. Um, I've done driving schools. I've done, you know, on-track stuff in real life. I've done rally driving. Um, and I've learned a lot, but there's a lot more to learn. I'll be the first to admit that, especially after this awesome demonstration of driving. Ooh, too low of a gear. I can go up a gear. There we go. And I am using the clutch. I'm not using the automatic clutch. I used automatic clutch in one of my videos, and I got more than a couple comments telling me how noobish that was. So, no, I do know how to drive a clutch. My, my real car I drive in real life has a clutch. Um, it's got a pretty heavy clutch in it, actually. There we go. Could have taken that corner a lot faster, but again, I'm just taking it easy. Oh, it looks like I got another car closing on me. If he gets close enough, I'll let him pass to avoid an altercation. Oop, swinging a little wide. Go for a gear. There we go. Clip the, come on, grab the apex. There it is. All right. Little tiny bit of brake just to bring the nose in. There we go. It's funny. Some of the stuff you learn in uh, rally driving, like left foot braking and uh, trail braking and stuff like that, surprisingly, some of it works on the pavement pretty well. I've applied a couple of things. Not all of them. Some of them lead to disaster. But a lot of the techniques I learned at rally school actually do apply on pavement in some situations. All right, buddy, go ahead. Take me on the outside. Car on your left. <laughs> you, you can tell he was just worried about me just plowing into him. And rightfully so in this game. Not, not a lot of people, at least in my class I'm in right now, you don't get a lot of people uh, really just like moving over and letting you pass and being nice. Usually, usually they get pretty aggressive. And then sometimes they'll even wreck you intentionally. And I've actually had to report a couple people to iRacing, but they require so much evidence. I mean, you basically have to, like, have DNA proof that they committed the infraction. Otherwise, they don't do anything. At least in my two cases, they didn't. Um, I had the replay footage, and I sent it to them and everything. And they still come, kept coming back to me. They're like, we need this. We need these files out of your folder. and Need more information. Then after I spent all that time collecting it all, they came back and said, oh, okay, well, there's not enough evidence right now to prove fault. So, you know, bugger off. Not really. They didn't say that. They're actually really polite. But... You can just tell they probably get so many complaints that there's just there's just no way that they can, you know, make everybody happy. And I understand that. I mean, I get pissed off as much as the next guy when a company does something that, that you know, that seems impersonal or it's like, you know, hey, listen, I give you guys my money. I expect a certain level of service. And I really do. But I can understand in some cases, you know, where, you know, I'm not going to just tell a company, oh, go to hell. I hate you guys. I'm never going to deal with you again because I didn't get, like, the super personal best tech support experience ever. Or have something turn out the way I want to. Like, a good case in point of this would be YouTube, right? YouTube, they screw at me all the time. I, I, you know, I send in stuff that's like, you know, okay, people are basically, like, threatening my life and threatening my family's life and everything, like, on here. And they'll come back and be like, okay, well, we, uh, we deleted their comment. Thank you. Have a nice day. And I'm like, what do you mean you deleted their comment? Go look at their channel. All the, oh, whoa, we got a big rack up here. Yay, two free places. Um, but anyways, you, you, they come back and they're like, okay, we deleted their comments. And you're like, go look at their channel. There's like all, some of these guys, all their comments are is they just go around and troll channels and like threaten to kill people. And, you know, I, trust me, I don't take it seriously at all. I actually laugh at most of the troll stuff and I think it's funny. And But, you know, when it's death threats and stuff like that, yeah, I'm going to report it because I think that's just crossing a line. Um so, so then I reply back to him again. And I send him another thing. I'm like, wait, so you didn't delete their account? And then they just reply back with the, you know, the automated canned response of, oh, this is inconclusive. 
Um, this is not enough evidence to do anything else. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, at that point, I just drop it. I realize YouTube probably has a million things reported every single day, and they don't have the manpower to really inspect all of them personally. So I'm sure a lot of it's automated and just goes through and you know deletes the comments automatically. Um, but you know, so so I, I'm still pissed about it. But you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lose sleep over it or delete my YouTube channel and stop dealing with YouTube because of that. You know. Uh, let's see. Whoa. Wow, my little video drive here has now turned into one of those commentaries where, you know, somebody just plays video and talks over it. Except for I'm actually doing it while I'm talking. I'm not playing footage of a previous game, guys. This is actually me right now racing <laughs> and doing a miserable job, mind you. But, hey, I'm still in the race, and that's good, right? Going on lap 17, that's good. Because if you can finish a race, that's the most important thing. That actually kind of reminds me, uh, when, I was, when I went to that Dirtfish Rally School, that's one of their key points that they drill into your head is, is, you know, first you have to finish a rally. You know, before you can be good and before you can be fast, you have to finish. Because if you don't finish a rally, it doesn't matter how fast you are. And they talk about car empathy and everything like that. Like, you know, don't, don't, just, don't just abuse the car until it dies on you. You have to, you have to be, you know, have some empathy for it. And, uh, and I, and I kind of feel, you know, even in this game, that's true. Because, you know, if you go sliding off and you tap walls and you touch people, it doesn't take much to just completely destroy your car. Whoa, that was, oh, crap. Just caught the dirt there. Almost, almost had a run in with that guy. Whew. Sorry, buddy. Of course, he can't hear that because I don't have voice chat on. I'll have to enable that next time so you guys can hear everybody just read me the ride act. Oh, lost my train of thought. <laughs> now, now, now I just want to finish the race. I suppose after doing this for a while and talking while I'm driving, I'll get a, I'll get the hang of this, and it won't be such a distraction. Otherwise, I'll just get kicked back to rookies, and every video you ever see of me will be racing rookies. But I do want to race some of you subscribers. I noticed a lot of you guys actually tracked me down on iRacing, about six or seven of you. And, uh, and I've got you in my, my little friends list. So if you guys see me online and I'm racing, hey, invite me to a race or, you know, set up a race. I, I'd love to race you guys. I'd love to race people that I actually kind of know, you know. Oh, I'm in fourth place? How would I manage that? That many people died, huh? See, there you go, winning through attrition. That's how you do it. See, I don't have to be fast to take fourth place. I just have to be consistent and alive. Because... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's pretty funny because it's like most of the races I won, I don't think I've ever really gained many places. I've maybe gained one or two on occasion when I've played this. But most of the time I place, you know, middle field or upper middle field. And it's because everybody else like exploded and ended up in the pits or had to log off. So, again, attrition is your friend in this game. Ooh, I don't need to be in sixth gear. There we go. Good old fifth. I lost. I know I lost quite a few points in this game, though, because I I touched cars a couple times. There's the flag. It's over. Here's another confusing thing with eye racing. It always says, there's the flag, it's over. And I've been in a couple races where I actually slowed down and I quit and I found out it actually wasn't the final lap. Has anybody else experienced that? I wonder if that was like an early bug when I was doing it. Because one time I was racing and I got lapped a couple times. And it says, oh, there's the flag, it's over. And I still had a lap to go and then I didn't do it. I just logged off and then I got a did not finish. So in the interest of being thorough, I'm going to go ahead and just do this one final lap here. Just to make damn sure that doesn't happen because you don't want a bunch of not finished on your license. Simulator is working wonderfully though. I couldn't be happier. The seating position is so comfortable. And if you guys want to see it, check out my other videos. This is the first video of mine you've seen. Most of my videos are actually done from a camera. They're not screen capture. So, you know, go check out my other videos. I even have a playlist dedicated to driving videos. So go check that out. And here we go. There we go. Now it's telling me the race is over. Okay, so I think that was my that was my real real lap there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull off the side of the road here. And there you have it, guys. There is 20 laps there at Lime Rock, and I think I'm in my Pontiac Solstice. I'm pretty sure of that. It's either that or it's the MX-5. But 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it gave you a nerdgasm. Go check out my other videos and see my cockpit. It's an Oboto Revolution that I've modified to have a mount for an iPhone and a mount for an iPad, which display all of my gauges and stuff using the iHUD software, which is also compatible with Android. So check that out. Um, hope you guys enjoy watching this video. Please like, favorite, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And share my videos around. I'm trying to grow my channel. I'm trying to get bigger. I'm trying to get my name out there. So any help you can do would be greatly appreciated. And uh, until next time, guys.